Hi everybody, I've got a new stream series for you. This time I'm showing my approach to creating a stylized plane in Modo, Substance Painter and Designer. For those of you who don't know me, I'm John, aka Graffiti, and I'm an environment artist with experience in both the animated film and games industries. As always, these videos are recorded live streams, and therefore there's no music, and each video is quite lengthy. So you might want to increase the speed of the video and put your own music on in the background. If you want to see me make stuff live, then please tune into my Twitch channel, and you can follow me on Twitter for updates. If you have any questions about my process, then please comment below and subscribe for new videos in the future. Enjoy. Stumbled across this uh, image, and I think it's great. And I love it, and I really want to. Uh, I'm going to take. I'm going to do the bigger variant of these two planes. Um, the previous image is like. This one, and this is fine, but actually when I looked at them again, I do prefer the elongated version. So I'm going to model this and we're going to get it into uh, Substance Painter. Uh, I want to do more Substance Painter this time and I want to be, you know, quicker. Uh, I want to kind of do more, you know, solid baking and um, yeah, I just want to do like a, an, an independent model. Um, yeah, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to do it all in Modo, and then Substance Painter, and then probably render it in Marmoset, and hopefully kind of set it up so it can have multiple paint jobs and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, because I think it looks really cool. So basically, um, just to start, this is what I've got. So from my, if, you know, for those of you who um, haven't seen before, last month I did lots of focus topics uh, which are going to go onto YouTube soon and we were just looking at uh, planning and you know what you can do yourself to keep yourself on track for projects um, we did some modular workflows we did quick starts to substance designer for Modo and just generally stuff that people ask a lot of questions about or people often skip out, or just things that, you know, if you put sink a little bit more time into at the beginning, it's going to be more helpful for you later on. So um, I'm just going to first of all save this in a new place. So I've already set up my folder structure here, um, just because it's easier. And we're going to dump this. Um, Word document. So ideally, I want this as a PDF later on. Um, uh, but yeah, so we're going to go um, project. I'll call it mechanical plane project doc. Let's save it there. Um, yeah, and basically all we're going to do is, and I know this is quite boring and not very interesting for people to watch, but the idea is that I can refer back to this even if something else comes up and I don't get time to work on the project. Um, I can open this at any point and it will tell me everything I need to know on this project. Um, more of a kind of a, a helpful sheet than anything else. Um, but by filling it in at the beginning, it means that we can, you know, we're not lost in the project. We can keep referring back to it and just go from there. Uh, okay, so the project name is Mechanical Plane. And this is only because I couldn't think of a better name for it. But it means that we have, you know, something to go on straight away. Uh, project goals. Okay, so in here... I'm just going to leave this so that you can see it. Um, I put, what do you want to achieve in this project? What skills do you want to improve? Are there any new skills you want to learn? That kind of thing. So in this box, you, you literally just, you know, write out what you want to achieve. Now, it's really good to write down your goals because, again, you refer back to it. Or if you're getting sidetracked, look at this and you'll go, ah, oh, I'm meant to be doing this, not this. So... Uh, so what I'm going to do, say is what do I want to achieve in this project um, uh, create oh I thought this was in black black 
a vehicle. If I can actually spell. Uh, so create a vehicle is one. Um, work on uh, high to low pipeline. More experience with substance painter. More experience with Marmoset. And that's all we need to write. Um, so the idea is in this PDF, you just type over this and it gets replaced. Uh, I just haven't got there that far yet. Um, yeah, and that's literally all we need to write for that. I want to create a vehicle. I want to create this vehicle. Uh, work high to work on, that should be high to low pipeline. So this just means having a higher res model and baking it onto a lower res model. So it's game ready. Um, and then I want to have more experience with Substance Painter because I've done a lot of Substance Designer stuff, but not so much Painter. Um, and I want more experience with Marvel Set. So that's, you know, rendering and making it look pretty. Um, so how long are you planning on spending on this project? And I also put write down a key deadline. Uh, so this is important because only you know your kind of conditions for doing a project. And again, this is designed so that you can look at it and go, ah, the de deadline is this, so it needs to be done by this. So what do I need to change in order to get it done in time? That kind of thing. So time frame. I'm giving myself a month, one month, and I'm not going to put a deadline because I don't want to add unnecessary pressure to myself. And you know, this is a learning experience for people as well. So we're going to go with just one month, and then on to the next one, which is so this is more the time frame. Now I've structured this so it's a bit easier for you to fill in yourselves or at least mark out now the idea is that i've given you some blank calendars so that again you're keeping all the information on one sheet you're not having to look for it it's all in the same place as everything else um and this refers back to the planning video i did i can't remember when in january um or last year it could have been even last year december or November, can't remember. Anyway, um, the idea is that you work out which uh, days in a month you can work on the project and how many hours you can do. And then once you've done that, you work you work out, well, if this is a tight deadline, are there any days that I can put additional time into if I need it? Um, and then lastly, you write in any holidays that you have coming up, um, you know, just to it's basically just working out a schedule for yourself um, and at a glance you know where you can work and where you can't um, because it's no good saying oh I'll work on it every night um, because you know everyone's got jobs and you might get home from work after doing eight hours or ten hours or whatever your shift is and go actually I don't want to work tonight and you know that's fine that's totally fine to do that but by planning out when you can work and when you can't, it's really good because you are giving yourself time to relax and time to take off, time to be away from the computer. Um, but you're also saying, right, well, if these are my down days, then I need to be working on this day and this day. And if you, you know, broadly say how many hours you want to do on a given day, you know yourself, you're like, right, I have to do two hours work, I have to do three hours work. Oh, it's a Saturday, I have to do six hours work because I've got some time coming up, I've got some holidays coming up that I can't take time off for. So really it's just, you know, about managing your schedule and that's why we're doing it. Um, so I'll fill this in in Photoshop um, after we've done everything else because I can't, you know, draw on it as well as I could here. So we're just going to move on. Um, so I've put in a risks box because you know, it's always good to identify, you know, things that could potentially go wrong or that kind of thing. So I'm going to say, um, get into grips. 
with uh, Substance Painter and likewise get into grips with Marmo Set. Um, because Yes, I've used um, Substance Painter in other projects, I use it at work quite a lot. I do know my way around it, but I haven't done anything in so much detail as this might require. Um, so that's why I'm kind of saying there's going to be some teething issues. And likewise, Marmoset, I have it, but I hardly ever use it. And that's going to take some time to set it up and light it properly and that kind of thing, which would be pretty cool. Um, so that's fine. I'm going to leave that there. Uh, now, reference, um, again, I'm including this as a keeping everything in one place, and all we need to do here is I'm going to bung in Ian's concept, the file path for it, um, keywords, so we're going to go with World War II aircraft, um, and probably leave it at that for the moment, um, just because you know, we're just starting out, we can always add to this. Um, uh, farm path's in the wrong place there, but yeah, basically that's all we need to put in. So that gives us enough information already that we're like, right, well, this is the concept that we're using, and World, World War II aircraft is, you know, going to tie in quite nicely with that. And hopefully we'll get enough, you know, cool reference images from that to make something awesome. Uh, project file path. So this is, you know, again, we're, we're creating a sheet that we can access everything from. So I'm just going to copy and paste that into here. Um, just because, yeah, again, nice and organized. And then I've put a naming convention as well. Now these two bottom ones you probably don't need, but if you've got everything else, you know, that you've got here, then why not include this as well? because again, it saves you from doing stuff in the future, kind of wondering or wasting time with it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is, I like to do uh, the model underscore two names if it, if it needs it, underscore A, underscore version one. And that's the way I like to name things. And then as far as texture is con concerned, we'll have the same thing followed by whatever acronym it will be for the textures, diffuse. So that kind of thing. And that, that's all we need to do. So now I'm just going to, well, I'm going to say, oh shit, uh, I'm going to save this document and I'm going to zoom out slightly. If I can, if I go 100%, can I get this all in? Yeah, so I'm just going to do a quick print screen. And I'm going to grab all this, I'm going to go copy. And then we're going to open Photoshop and then I'm going to fill in my planning bit because it will be super handy uh, to demonstrate what I mean or what I intend the document to be you know, used for. Okay, so I'm going to paste that and get ourselves a couple new layers. And then I'm going to come in and we're going to put, so I've got a calendar here, I've got a pen as well. Um, I'm going to go red. this brush and we also want to add this okay so like that so basically today's date is the 15th and it's a Thursday so down this one middle of the page uh, so let's just mark that and then roughly a month from now Thursday again is probably going to be the 12th, yeah, so yeah, I think it's somewhere like this, maybe. And those are our time, that's our time limit. So we've got March and April, and then all we're doing in is now putting in the time. So let's go with like another color. I love orange, that's why I associate with work. So three hours on the Thursday, three on the Tuesday, three on that one, and then we carry that through, three 
and three. So I'm just putting in all the time that I'm going to be using for streaming. And then again on the third, so that's here. So I need to move that down, but uh, here, 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 and here. And I'm just going to erase that if I can. And get the brush again, get the red again. And this is, you know, quite boring, agreed, but it will help us stay on track. So that's fine. That's what we've got. Uh, next up, uh, we've got, well, contingency time. So what can we use for that? Uh, so maybe a, a light, like a blue. Go with blue. Uh, right. So then this is where if there's going to be any time, what can we use? So maybe we can put three hours in here. Uh, dun, dun, dun. And then it's right, it's bank holiday weekend. So maybe three hours in there. And then the following week, we could probably go three and three. Although, having said that, I think I'm busy on that little Wednesday. In fact, I am, so I can't go on one of them. Okay, so there we go, we've got some contingency time. And the idea is that we're going to have these as, um, so we'll put that as blue, uh, put that as orange, and then let's have another colour, you know, what about purple perhaps? And that's going to be our holiday, so holiday, so days we can't use are, so that day. Uh, that's fine. I think that's it. Can't do that Wednesday. Uh, can't do that Sunday. Uh, oh, that one might be tough actually. But so those are definitely days we can't do. So you know that's fine. You know I'm having a break. I'm doing other things, and we're you know I know I'm marking out some time for where I'm going to be using it. So uh, planned work time totals as. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, uh, 18, 21, 24, 27. So that's all right. 27. Uh, 27 hours. And then contingency time, uh, that's 9 hours. And then I've left another box at the end for actual hours done. Um, and to, you know, to make this a bit simpler, well, a bit easier for people to see on the stream, let's just take these and again down here. Let's do that again. So basically, we can see the time that you know we the time period we want. We can see uh, the time which in the days that I'm going to be working and for the hours as well. Days that you know I could use for contingency time if I want, and days that are definite holidays and I can't change, and that gives me 27 hours with potentially now nine hours extra. Um, you know, so that's, you know, that's all right, actually. Um, and that fits into our, you know, our month calendar as well. Um, yeah, what I am just going to mark as well, so that it doesn't, um, I don't, it doesn't, you know, knock me, knock me for six later, is I'm just going to move, just indicate that these overspill from the previous month. And that 
that's it. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that, and I'm just going to save it to JPEG, and I'm going to bung it in the folder. I can call it mechanical uh, plane project doc. Save, save. And now we can just open the image anytime we want. And there we, well, there we go. And we can refer back to this and see, are we on track? Are we not on track? Blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to save that and close it because we don't need any more. We'll keep this open. We will keep that open. So uh, yeah. I was looking at this and I thought, right, so let's, let's really, we could just crack on now, start blocking out a shape, that kind of thing, and then um, as we need reference, we'll, you know, sort it out. Um, but right now, I think there's enough going on. It would be really nice to do multiple paint jobs. That's something that I'd like to do on this. It would be quite cool. And, you know, set it up so that we can do that quite easily in Painter. That would be pretty awesome. Um, what I am do, going to do actually while I'm here is create a pure ref document because that is something we do need. Okay, so can I copy and paste it? Yeah, I can. Excellent. And hopefully you can see this. I think you can see this on the stream. I'm going to save this and I'm going to bring it in the same place. Reference oh, pure ref board one, and then we can you know refer back to this whenever we want. Um, so let's leave it down here for now, and let's get let's get cracking. How are you, maniac? Are you well? Did you uh, bake those uh, tank tracks in the end? Okie dokie. Uh, right, so those are new layers. And I want to get in our human scale first. Import. Mm, scale projects. No, setup. Scale ref. Bring the dude in. So, sort out those normals. Uh, let's turn off the lighting. Lights, there we go. And I want to turn off the work plane as well because I don't like having it on. Where is that? Advanced options. Oh, no. Working on them right now is everish, but I fucked up and I had to go back as merge some mesh together. We've all been there. Um, right, okay, so we've got this guy on his Todd. Copy, paste him in, get rid of this one. And I want to just give him just a default. Ooh, cancel. Default material, and I just want to turn all the shading off. So they're not, they're not getting any reflections or anything. Good. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's call this scale ref. Brilliant. And then what I'm also going to do at this stage is position him so that we've got him in like a sitting position. The reason I do this is because he sat down in the plane, and if he's not sat down, then we it, we might not get the scale completely right. So, soft selection. That in. Okay. So it might have to be a bit cruder than this. Turn that off. Okay, and then we rotate 
this. And remember, this is only scale, it doesn't have to be perfect. to the knees. How is he sat? Oh, it looks quite upright. So I could imagine that maybe... I, I think, I feel like it would be like driving a car to an extent. Maybe not with your legs so outstretched but enough so that it gives you some purchase. And that's it, that's all we need to really do for this guy. Let me just smooth this out a bit more. Lovely. Okay, so there we've got our dude. And we'll label both of them. Sit in and stand in. can see them and we're going to save this file. Go projects, modo, and then mechanical plane, objects, call it plane A version 1. Uh, done. Save. Right, brilliant. Okay, so you know, let's just start roughing out some shapes and kind of get a feel for it. Uh, now, I'll probably end up using you know mop booleans or something like that. And to be honest, it's it's been a while since I've done any vehicles, so this is likely to be interesting. But what we can do is have a go and see what happens. So let's do that. model things on axes just because it's easier now the actual do seems to be quite small within it and I kind of feel like he's a thinner as well so what happens if we scale this guy in slightly just getting a feel for the shapes you know and the actual size of the thing okay so maybe let's put all this bit and we can see as well that it's the actual top of the engine comes up to its shoulders so this needs to come up is quite elongated in terms of body shape. So maybe bring it in. Bring this in. So now we're going to have issues where he's bigger than the actual thing, but that's fine. We can deal with that. seem quite small so this is gonna 
need some back and forth, some wibble wobble room when we get to it. I'd say it's probably probably comes out a bit around here. Boot camp was really tough this week. It was hard. It was horrible. <laughs> but I'm, uh, you know, I'm on the way to recovery, so so it's all good. Right now it'll be good to get in a cylinder at this point. Uh, what am I doing? 16 size fine. Let's just apply the tool. So what I might do here. We're going to block out the shape, but then when it comes to modeling, we're going to follow uh, the, the, obviously the block out, but we're going to um, maybe do mock booleans, tool for boolean tools to get it working the way, it, the way we want. Guess in there a bit. Yeah, the scale it does need to be bigger. He seems quite high up in the actual thing, I feel like. Ages since I've blocked a vehicle out. Already I'm feeling the pressure. Yeah, I can feel the eyes. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, you know, we're, we're getting somewhere with it. Very, very crudely, but getting somewhere nonetheless. Bloodborne in the PS uh, Plus this month. I have, and I am shite at it. And I really wish I was better as well. But I've never played a Souls game. I'm like getting my comeuppance. In. <laughs> it's not uh, like I, people online make it look so easy, but I'm just like, how am I dying so many times in the beginning area? Yeah, yeah. The furthest I've got was that guy with the brick on the bridge. Um, yeah, and I went into the dark room, but going into places like that scares the shit out of me. So, I mean, horror games, horror in general scares the crap out of me. Um, is the Dark Souls 1 remaster, is that on Switch? Because um, I think it's on for me. I would happily, if I get on well with Bloodborne, that might, you know, persuade me to buy a Switch because, um, you know, I feel like having to, being able to game on the go would be quite handy. Um, um, You know, I could sink time into to playing Dark Souls 1 quite easily without having to, you know, sit at the PlayStation or what have you. this with Modo's tools to get something working. Okay, so this is going in. And it seems that this two is for one. And right now we're keeping the mesh quite low res because it doesn't need to be high res for us getting the right shapes we need. exaggerated as that but and then I feel like I can bring the ball down a bit because of that. Um I have a switch they are fun well worth the money apparently it's been released on the switch May the twenty fifth along with PS4 Xbox One and PC oh maybe I'll get it on PS4 then but again May the twenty fifth is near my birthday so perhaps a switch <laughs> So it's quite like it's it's kind of like blocking out stuff for the first time. Like I can't really describe how much you know almost imposter syndrome I was getting when I first you know about what fifteen minutes ago when I was blocking this shape out. But once you plunge in, 
it's kind of like, oh, this is actually really nice. And we can see it taking shape a bit more. Um, and it's kind of drifting away. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, you don't realize, or at least for me, I don't realize how out of my depth I am sometimes until you attempt something new and you're like, what the hell are we doing? Yeah. Okay, so now we need another cylinder. And you know, like I was doing in the quick start, just get into faults, primitives, nothing special. And getting them all together. Could be a birthday present to myself, could be, I think that's the only way I'm going to get one, if I'm being totally honest. <laughs> I think this is, needs to be... This needs to be cut. this point this bit is far too wide now at the top if anything it goes out and then comes back in the actual mesh so one way we can do that is if we select this hole okay so we need that bit there as well Bevelin this edge. So we get more to work with, maybe just one. I think I'm being wrong by Stephen Roberts. Um, 
not sorry. Plans for the weekend. Ugh. Well then, as I said to my wife, buy me the games. <laughs> well, that's what I say to Lisa is that uh, she says, I always say, well, I always like art book. So, um, you know, just buy me them. She's like, but I don't want to get you things that, you know, are related to your job. And you're like, yeah, but I love it. I like doing what I do. So, <laughs> guaranteed awesome present for me, art books. Sorry about this. Okay, hold on. It's always when I'm streaming this kind of thing. Right. Um, let's see, what, let's see what comes back from that. Uh, sorry, right. That's obviously not good for the stream, texting on camera. Uh, <laughs> To be so popular, not really. I've got going to someone's christening uh, around lunch, someone's son, and then um, a friend's son, I should say. And then because people are coming over from different cities, it's kind of like, well, what are we doing? You know, are we all going out? Are we doing something? Are we. Can we do something? What is there to do if we do go out? Can people afford to go out? Etc., etc. Polygons, just what we like. Just to keep it all nice and like together. That's what my agent most of the time and, and the wife. Well, it's this, the problem I have is that um, no one no one likes being the first to commit, and um, because of that, you get lots of situations where people are just um, you know everyone wants to do it, but no one wants to be the first person to you know do it, and it's just like, come on, guys! Sometimes you just got to be first. You've got to do it. Seems to be a bit fat. 
out. So. One thing I do need to think about with this is landing gear, which we could, you know, attach somewhere onto these, or maybe they're just inside and they, you know, come out. Uh, but yeah, because that's one thing that I, when I was looking at this before, it doesn't have anything of. So, you mean the well we can do? Yeah, yeah. Um, we also need to sync this back in, so turn this off for the uniform. this so that I hate it when Bridge does that. this off. see what's going on a bit more. Uh, why is it I'm watching stream the wife nags me a lot? <laughs> This isn't, you know, too bad for a first block out. You know, just roughing in the shapes and such. Uh, right, another cylinder.
Looks like there's a spider around the corner of my eye, so I'm going to have to, unfortunately, nab it. It turns into a beast. Have you made a decision on uh, Bournemouth or uh, the other place? Is it? Uh, oh, you clan. Yeah. Uh, this is Vila. Yeah. Seems like it's the same width, so let's keep it like that. Let's match it up a bit. And then let's grab this. Go up to the bottom layer. And move. So maybe the cockpit area is still a little on the big side. So what if we just move this? Push it in again. Into waiting on an email back, but I think Bournemouth. Oh, great! I was speaking to a few companies about news. I just want to learn and be the best I can be. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, um, definitely. I'm sure that's all anyone wants. It's just, I suppose you're, you have got experience. You have, you know, gone down other routes, you know, before this point, and that's 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 fine. Um, it's kind of like what you can do to get to where you want to go your quickest, but also to a good, well, not a good, a great standard. Um, yeah. Um, and I, I suppose as well, it's like you're, you can think about it a bit more uh, seriously than I suppose, you know, someone straight out of school because they're just like oh yeah let's go to university let's do whatever and then get three years in and be like oh shit this is not what i want to do um 
I think also, yeah, be wary, you know, still with companies because, again, it's like what kind of work will you be doing and is that something you want to do? But, I mean, at the same time, experience counts for a lot. Counts for way more than a degree does. needs to be more elongated at the bottom is kind of uh, uh, it's like a square but with beveled corners so let's Friend from unit is at your place to Joe. To Joe, if you know him. Uh, have you got a surname? Uh, and do you know what they do? Are they an environment artist?
anything like that. Okay. Uh, and this bit I think needs to be higher. Yeah. So maybe we extend that back a bit further again. Get that onto a new layer. A weird pinch, but not the end of the world. I think we just need to put in there. So there is an edge loop here, but it might be worth putting in another one. Still getting some weirdness, but I mean, it is only a block out. So let's cut down here.
Okay, so we're getting some weirdness on this joint, but that's not the end of the world. I think the shape is a lot better than it was on the front. Brickbeck. If he's in QA, he'll be in our building, but he's on a completely different floor to me, so I probably haven't bumped into him. How long has he been there, do you know? I'm getting somewhere with this now. So maybe, like, I feel like we can have some artistic license in here. So maybe we'll bring. feel like, uh, let's grab the engine as well actually, exit, exit, cut and paste. I feel like there's a, get another cylinder around here. a bit like a pod racer to, to some extent. But yeah, no, I'm getting there. Uh, it's about six months or so. Hello, official Dazar. How are you? What an entrance. Hello! <laughs> what brings you here? Uh, welcome, of course. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself.
Hi Action, how you doing? Yes, it has been a long time. Very long time. New project time. How are you? What have you been up to? So excited! Finally, Substance Painter 2018 is out with new U UI. Really? Um, I suppose I need to upgrade a bit, in all honesty, because especially for this project, because I want to do more Substance Painter stuff. But um, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Have you been started playing with it then? Um, is it any good? What are your what are your thoughts? Because that's going to be an extra 75 quid, <laughs> which I cannot afford this month because I'm getting a car serviced. And it's not going to be pretty. Okay, right. Now I think this is also, it seems like it's curved outwards as well. So let's get that in. Whoops. Subtle curvature, not much. Probably, you know, comes more out of the, at the top. It's out 15th. Oh, today! Maybe you can download it right now. Nice, I thought it was tomorrow. I think the new UI is great. You get much more place to work. Oh, nice! <laughs> Project B stylized and hand painted. Um, probably not. Um, we'll see how it, how it goes, but I kind of want to go down the um, kind of more realistic route. Um, and kind of do kind of like World War II, um, you know, stylings and uh, that kind of look. And I think it would look quite cool if it was made to be more realistic than it is stylized. Slash, I know how to do that as well. Um, I think it would be quite cool to see what it would look like with um, cell shading on um, that we can do in inside of Modo. Um, but yeah, it would be. I think I am going to go down the realistic route with this one. Okay, I might do this bit up here now. So if we grab something we already have, like this bit. Oops. Paste. Bring that out. Get the top bit.
this bit. Or at least not get rid of it, but move it. Perhaps. And then we can get another piece that kind of goes in here. Or just manipulate this so it fits a bit better. bit more with the with the hunt that's going on. So, um, -da -da. Is it me? Is your stream lagging? I have no lags. Yes, I am finally back in the three D world after many months break life and so on, but I'm still not 100% sure about the project I want to do. Probably a little environment in the Overwatch style, yeah, which will be quite a challenge because I have never done anything stylized. Hey Micah, how you doing? It has been a while. I'm coming to Staffordshire uh, next month, I think, to do a talk, um, which I need to write. Um, but action... Uh, yeah, that'll be interesting. Yeah, do a small thing. What I, so, uh, action, you weren't, I don't think you were here last month. So last month I did lots of fo focus topics and stuff. Um, I did like a planning environment. Uh, I did a modular assets 101. I did a quick start to Modo. I did a quick start to designer. I did uh, baking in painter, designer and marmoset. Unreal Four Master Material setup, that kind of thing. So um, I'm going to get, well, I'm going to edit hopefully a lot of them tomorrow and get them up ASAP. But I created a nice little, uh, you know, uh, PDF that you could fill in, um, you know, to help with your project planning, and you know, it's something that really helps me and you know other people can benefit from this and everything's going to be made free uh so if you're you know struggling with planning or anything like that then let me know and i can send you this out early and stuff and you can kind of test it for me um but yeah i find this kind of thing useful and so might you so um it's basically it goes through on one sheet of paper what you want to achieve the time frame that you want to work within um, the reference you want to use and where it is. So what I found was with this with the stairway project, I was you know going back and forth to it over several months, um, and I you know got lost where I was and that kind of thing. Um, whereas by having something all on one sheet, it's kind of like you could do like you can be off the project for two months and come back to it and just look at the sheet and go. That's where I am. That's what I need to do. Do you have VODs, videos of your earlier streams on YouTube or something? Yes. Yeah, so hopefully if uh, if these commands work, boom, yeah. Um, yeah, so some of them, so the Beyond Human one, which I think you know about is on there. The planning one's on there, but nothing else is on there at the moment, but it will be up uh, this month. I want it to be. Uh, get my other project, uh, my other videos up this month. So yeah, I will notify the Discord um, for anyone watching or listening in. Um, I always notify here and on Twitter. Um, and if you want feedback or anything, throw it. Just get it on the Discord. Um, likewise, I'm just you know dishing out all the commands now. Uh, I'm on Twitter. 
Did that work? Oh, the Twitter one doesn't work. It's because I spelt it wrong. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's basically graffiti across many a social network, uh, a, a social um, platform. Uh, but yeah, I will notify on everything um, when stuff goes up and let me know if it's useful or not. And I'll get stuff on Gumroad as well, so it's easier to download and store everything. Um, yeah. And I just rambled for like five minutes there. Uh, okay, so this block out is beginning to take you know, a nice form. Great. So now we're getting to the all important wings. Oh, yeah, what's well, so we were piecing these together, weren't we? Okay, so we've got the middle in there. That's fine. So. weirdness going on here, so let's pinch them. Um, did you hear about Quixel Mixer? Looks pretty nice. Oh, I didn't. Let's have a look. I think I saw a little, oh, that's pretty awesome. Oh, that's pretty wonderful, isn't it? That's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, that, that does look pretty awesome. My, I think my one problem though with Quixel is it, it doesn't run very well on my computer because it's tied into Photoshop. Um, and I just, that's why I use Substance so much is because it runs a lot better on my computer. But I own Quixel, uh, I just don't use it. obviously a block out so it doesn't have to be super refined but it would be good to get you know something in place I suppose that's the idea that's what we want to do just keep refining the block out uh, so this whole bit take back move 
in. Seem to have an influx of people tonight, which is great. How's everyone doing? Oh, Micah, sorry, your comment before. Uh, yes, at the university. Um, I'm talking to to Leo about it. Um, probably some kind of workshop esque thing would be. I think that's my aim. Um, just so that, and I know you're in sound, but giving people, uh, you know, more of a workshop. I, you know, like my last project was very foliage heavy, so maybe let's do some foliage and show you how I did it and stuff like that. Um, stuff that people can pick up and use straight away. Um, you know, not what that is. Um, what I understand, it's standalone and you can mix different materials, textures to a prettier one. But yeah, I agree, algorithm it seems to be much better around the leader. Well, that's cool that it's a standalone program. Um, I just let me copy it. And this we need to bring in a bit smaller. Uh, we need to do an edge extend on this. Sound. Opinion. It's not cheating if it looks good and works well. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. So if I'd be able to keep up at the workshop, but I should be about if you feel like a drink after. Yeah, well, it depends on what time it is because I can't afford to take too much holiday right now because we're in uh, a little bit of a crunch. But um, yeah, I mean, well, well, I'll let you know in due course when I know more information. Okay, so that seems to be working like that. Now I think that this bit, so this whole area, has to be brought down a touch. And then we need to put like a, a shape in there just to sync these up. this piece, move it up,
this kind of slot in a bit better, I think. It's an extension of that, so perhaps this comes out a bit. Okay, yeah. <coughs> All right. Did you see any of my messages? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, did you? Yes, I'm in. <laughs> right. Quickly uh, respond with that. So what are we doing? Crystal Maze or Breakout? I've got no idea. Uh, I'm sure you're better than no, Oh, I forgot that was on. You should have gone with her. It's just like, oh, she said they popped in before, before she came. They give you oysters. There's like a Motown band on. Change my noises for different things. Was that a new follow? It could have been. Let's see if the icon comes up. A new follow from Arax. Arax. Hopefully, yeah, you know. Well, yeah. Thanks for the follow. Really appreciate it. Um, let me know if you've got any questions or anything about what I'm doing. Happy to answer as I go. Um, yeah. Thank you for the follow. into there, then in 
here. Let's get this back bit. Expand that out. And grab this. Is there a way to exactly plan the poly count of a prop or is it just experience? Don't worry about poly counts, like, at all. Um, I f I, those, obviously from earlier days of game development, poly counts were a massive thing, um, but on today's technology, you know, PS4, Xbox One, you do not need to worry about poly count. Um, yeah, just don't worry about it. For me, I would say cylindrical objects put more, or spherical objects put more geometry into them, just because personally I hate seeing faceting on low poly shapes. Um, it just, as soon as I, it, I see it, it screams, um, this is a game. So if you're going to put your geometry anywhere, put it into, you know, defining shapes or uh, things that are curved. Um, but aside from that, I wouldn't worry about poly counts at all. Um, generally, um, you know, the you know, it can handle it. The, the technology can handle it. So, yeah, um, it's not an issue, or not as big as an issue as it used to be. I think when you know in in game dev. You still have to optimize stuff, obviously, uh, and you will be able to always squeeze, make things like you know lower, uh, lower res. But for portfolio stuff, don't don't worry about it. Okay, it's a it's a non thing, in my opinion. Let's move these down. I'm gonna squeeze this in because. Definition right. And we also need to bring it in here as well. So I think we're going to get some issues where we need to really work on what's going on in this area, but it could be actually this, we're probably overthinking this, just going to delete that, what's going on back here, probably don't need any of this, just delete that whole bit, uh, and then let's just pull out some edges, like so, and okay, so then we need to scale these in. Like so that seems fine. Uh, just going to turn everything else off for the moment. And move these onto each other, nice and easy. And 
turn everything on again. So now we've got more geometry to work with. We can better manipulate the shape. Yeah, see, that's just even sorting that bit out has helped quite a lot. Still, you know, not 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 absolutely perfect, but again, at this stage, it does not need to be. Move some of these about a bit. So let's just cut another piece out of something.
level. So the whole cockpit is kind of working a bit better on the back end now, which is good. And then what we were going to do was loop over the top, smooth this out a bit. So let's grab these bits. Pull it down. And you know, we're just keeping this pretty low res. Um, basically, as soon as you start adding in more geometry, the harder it's going to be to tweak things, you know, tweak the shapes of things, etc. Um, just take it from me with ex you know, an experience. Um, you quickly realize you don't need to add in so much. Okay. So this bit looks like it's going to cause some issues, but again, that's edge flow. We don't really need to worry about that as yet. Although, having said that, Put that in like that and get rid of that. And just kind of rearrange this so it's kind of a bit more of a nicer flow. And it's going to tie in a bit better at this stage, which is what we want. Um, Guessing people are you know working on their own stuff in the background with me sort of yammering on. It's okay if you are. That's what most people do. Okay. Uh, right. So song repeating over and over. Yes. <laughs> let's change that. Actually, let's go. Let's go somewhere in here. Z brushing. Oh yes, yeah. I remember that. Will you completely model it in Modo or Z brush later? This is going to be all Modo. Um, I'm not really looking to go into ZBrush just because that would be, I really want to learn hard surface modeling in ZBrush, but I don't like learning things while I'm streaming them to everybody else. It makes me feel super stupid because, and also quite boring for you guys because you just see me, you know, looking at tutorials, trying it out, getting frustrated, that kind of thing. Um, I might take it into ZBrush if I need to, you know, knock in some things, but at the same time, I'm hoping to just get a lot, uh, a lot of the wear um, from the texturing. Um, so yeah, it's going to be Modo based um, for the most part, for like 98% of it, of the modeling, slash all of it. Well, I mean, we'll see how it goes. I'm not going to rule it out, but I'm also... Um, I'm not desperate to go into ZBrush because I know I can accomplish what I want to do inside of um, Modo. Um, okay, so this bit needs to come up and round. So, best way to do this. Uh, might be just to get another cylinder.
Hmm. Let's undo that. Didn't mean to go off axes. I don't know what happened then. these and we can extrude down to here Probably pull these out maybe even so before we do that let's pull both of them out and then pull both of these out on with the you know the, the smoothness of it and then it seems to get a bit more elongated towards the top so let's just oh, those round scale that up so that's got a tiny windshield well window Obviously we need this to this whole area now to go into the shape of this. Now that could be a bit of work on both sides. So maybe pull this out to make it a bit square up. So it's just constantly, you know, refining the shape a bit more um, and just, you know, finding areas and getting them to work a bit better to the reference and that it's not going to be at this stage, it's not going to be perfect, but it's just about getting the right shapes down and, um, you know, checking that things work together. Perfect, but we're in the right direction. Uh, right now I'm just trying to grab Thank you. 
help in define the shape a bit more. Like we're getting a, you know, a bit of a weird pinch in here. So what can we do to help with that? That's why I work in orthographic as well. It's you know, you can look at something in the 3D view and then quite quickly select it in orthographic, tweak it, just keep going back and forth, tweaking settings, tweaking verts, I should say. So down here, we should connect these up because that's part of why it's looking a bit weird, I think. At the moment. So let's just grab. Just bring it down a bit. Okay, and then again. in the shape. So I don't really want to put any more edge loops into the hole because it doesn't need it and we're only going to be overcooking it if we do. So making it harder for ourselves if we add any more in. So that will do for the moment. Again we've got you know, it working a bit better, we can now reduce this a bit more.
looks all right. And then what can we do in this middle bit? shapes. Well, how do you mean I'm blocking out shapes or you're blocking out shapes? I also need to save this because I haven't saved it in a while. said before about refining the shape yeah yeah just just keep refining the shape really um, now what I should do is and I probably should have done this before I started refining the cockpit a bit more but get the wings in and the back bits in um, you know just because we should do that do that
kind of feel like it's something along those lines. And then we can scale these. So I've got a backup that's in the right position. something like that. To be honest, they're probably a little bit longer. Um, tell you what, let's do a clone of this. Sorry, not a clone, a mirror. Duplicate mirror instance. I think the whole thing could do with being squashed a bit, but um, uh, um, 
right, so now let's try and get... So we've got 30 minutes left, 40 minutes left. Let's try and get these um, wings in. So the bottom seems like it needs to be brought up a bit now. Sorry, texting again. Uh, does it take a while to get used to the Modo interface coming from Autodesk software? I'm used to the 3ds Max and Maya and watching your modeling confuses me a bit. Yeah, I can see it's quite confusing. Uh, that's why uh, I did the quick start to Modo um, last month um, so that hopefully it's two three hour streams um, but I go through everything I I use because I still use vanilla Modo really. I only change one tool. Um, it's modeling in Modo is it's more intuitive than Maya, um, and it takes you know a little bit a little bit of time to get used to. But the um, once you have got your head around it, it's super easy to use, and um, you know. I can, it's kind of in a weird way. Yeah, see, Hard Maniac's been doing it, uh, well, and watched the, um, the stream I did, um, and has done probably a few props himself. Um, but yeah, with any piece of software, uh, it just takes time, um, you know, and that's fine. But once, I think once you get your head around it, it's, and I, I say that like it's really difficult, it's not. Um, it really opens up, you know, the game a bit, and um, you'll find that it's super, I mean, I personally find it really easy to use, it, but then I have been using it for quite a long time now. Um, Uh, but yeah, it's kind of like if you have, if you you know give it a go, and if it's something like if you're having trouble with it, then let me know, and hopefully I can give you some pointers. But it is a like I would do all my like I do all my personal work in Modo. I don't use anything else for modeling. Um, at work, I have to use Maya because that's you know that pipeline. But um, yeah. It's I can't really yeah, I can't really describe how easy it is to use unless you've just got to give it a go really. But yeah, if you want, if you hang on until I've you know uploaded those tutorials, at least you'll have you know a good starting block to go from. Um, I'm not going to. Say, I'm not saying that you only need to look at my tutorial to understand it, but I think it will give you kind of a good start. And then there's tons of tutorials out there, so it's just finding the stuff that works for you, really. But yeah.
out this house go. Let's get a thing in here. As it seems there are more and more murder fans every day. There must be a reason. Yeah, well, it's kind of a, it's 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 interesting. I find because you know, I mean, where I am now, I only use Modo because I had to in my previous studio, um, and you know, the tools I was using before Modo were very similar to Modo. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like. Like I know um, uh, Matt O and um, Dynasty and Chris Raspberry, they they all use Modo, and it's kind of like oh, so you know more and more people are using it, and it's kind of it's nice being a part of the movement. Well, having already been a part of the movement of you know Modo actually being a decent piece of software, um, and for me as well, I just kind of hate that everyone's brought up on Maya when you know there's more that's not you, you, it's not the greatest piece of software in the world in my opinion there's a lot that you know if you want something that you can just model in do your good uv in a really good renderer it's a complete package it's very cheap um modo is like the thing for it um it's had pbr for ages um it's just a really nice, quite simple package. Uh, might cut all the way down there in a second. That's a bit of width to this. on top join up some polygons. I think also with Modo it's kind of like you don't have to dive into very many menus if any whereas I know Maya traps you in, in menus quite a lot which isn't particularly useful
is it? Uh, rotate it slightly, so that's fine. We'll do, do that. Let's bring this this up a little bit. Also, what will help is so we might be going a little bit off piece here, but just making this a bit more elongated at the front, a bit more aerodynamic. and let's get some more cylinders going on so we can hook things up So we're going to have to use our imagination a bit in there, but that's not the end of the world. Perhaps even the um, the wheels are kind of on the bottom of the wings, you know, because it doesn't look like these fold up into any particular place. Um,
So the wings are probably a bit long at the moment. So let's just scale those in a bit. Perhaps. Uh, what else is going on? So it comes slightly and then goes out. Maybe if you just take that in a bit, maybe push these out a bit, exaggerate the shape a bit more. This is, you know, I'm a big fan of just taking parts from, you know, other areas of the mesh of the of the model, instead of starting from scratch each time and just repurposing them. I mean, I know you can't do that in all cases, but it's quite nice. It's a good start when you can. This, this is where things might get a bit finicky. Let's leave it and we'll see what it's like when the other side joins up, which we can do in a moment. Uh, so let's just, what time are we on quarter past? So I haven't got long to just do this. Mirror, instance mirror, quite tall. Okay, so we've got those now. So now let's cut out from this so wherever this connects so let's go with uh, middle of here to middle of here to here to here and match up the other side Side as well. 
this middle bit. And instead of deleting it, oh actually we could delete it. And then that's probably better because we get a better shape. Of this stuff, which we will give some thickness to, in fact, before we do anything else. Would you say 1.5 million poly for a whole tank is a high mesh? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. If that's in ZBrush, then yeah, that's fine as a high mesh. I, again, I can't see the mesh, so it really depends on is the geometry, is the is the detail, is the geometry in the right places? Um, I'd assume it is, um, but yeah, that seems quite. That seems fine for a high res mesh. But then at the same time, you don't need to have a poly count limit in mind for high res geometry because that's all it is high res. This bit we don't want to move the exterior.
stretches out this a bit more, I think. So let's leave the front two. to just get a couple of random parts in. up a bit, so a little closer, maybe this thing needs to be made to be smaller,
Okay, and that will do our block out for the moment, first pass. Save that, a brill. Uh, so, I'm going to leave it there for tonight. Um, I'm going to post this uh, on the Discord, so if you weren't here uh, for that earlier, then here's the link. Um, where I kind of, you know, notify everyone about streams and such and comment on work, comment on work and ask for you about myself, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so reasonably happy with the block out so far. Definitely, you know, hitting some key areas. I think the shape, you know, we can still perfect the shape as we go on but generally speaking you know it's in the same vein as um, which is good I haven't got these front bits in yet so get that in at some point but yeah so far looking all right let's have a look at this in a render So not too bad. Obviously we're getting some weird bits where the engons are, uh, but you know, that's to be expected when we're working with rough shapes. Uh, maybe like this. Go hard edge there. looking all right so far yeah have a great re weekend um, yeah so I'll post this up and you know if you've got any comments then let me know that's quite interesting I think the shape needs some work it could be more aerodynamic Maybe especially at the back. But yeah, no, let's let's leave it like that. And let's just see if we ooh, get 
a wireframe material. So people can see the the wires at this stage. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, well, I'll post that now. Uh, thanks for coming along, everyone. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Give me a follow uh, if you want to see more of it. Uh, get in the Discord or follow me on Twitter and I can update you with what I'm working on. Uh, stream updates, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I'll be back on Tuesday. Uh, we'll be refining this block out. Um, you know, getting all the other extra parts in. Um, extra features, that kind of thing, and then from there we'll just keep working and working up the model. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, well, have a great weekend, everyone, and I'll see you all on Tuesday. Uh, howdy, corner Sita, hello. Um, the Discord link, nope, you're not allowed to stop, I just got here. Lol. Um, well, if you go. I don't know if you saw this in time, Keith, uh, Sita, but if you go onto the Discord, uh, you'll find everything on there. And um, uh, yes, hopefully on you'll catch me next time. Ah, uh, <laughs> oh, classic how people come in at the end, isn't it? But um, yeah, I've done my three hours. So uh, yeah, um, see you all next week. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.